35 hours on the Amtrak Coast Starlight. Can we survive? What do we eat? What do we do? What do we see? How do we shower? And why are we going? Well, it's all for a sandwich. You are traveling with Brian. The Coast Starlight begins its journey from Seattle at the King Street Station. Opened in 1906 and designed by Reed and Stem, the architects that designed New York City's Grand Central Terminal, King Street Station is gorgeous. Now when riding Amtrak you have two choices, a seat, business or coach, or a room of varying sizes. Now, there's not a lot of difference between coach and business seats. We'll point out the few differences there are. The first difference is business class gets its own train car. I'll have to act business-like, I guess. The Coast Starlight has seats down here below. And if you go up these stairs, if I can make it up these stairs, whoa, more seats up here on top. Yikes, will you look at this rookie vlogger camera work? Yeesh. I promise, I'm gonna get better. On this trip, we got to choose our seats. So I picked the window seat. As you can see, lots of leg room. And plenty of space up top for your stuff. Our Amtrak train leaves King Street Station at 9.50 a.m. Right on the dot and right on time. We are on our way. To wonderful LA. Operation Sandwich has begun. Right next to King Street Station is the stadium where the Seattle Seahawks play. Sorry, no more Russell Wilson. Next door is the Seattle Mariners ballpark with its retractable roof. And today, the roof is open. Next stop is Georgetown as we pass the original Rainier Brewery, built in 1878. A lot of beer got brewed there. Then we pass Boeing Field, where you can catch a glimpse of a lot of different types of aircraft. Looks like that's an AWACS plane right there. So the train is pretty empty right now. Again, as you can see, lots of leg room. Now, let's see if I can master the footrest here. <laughs> Look at that. Oh, we've got happy feet. We've got happy feet. Okay, done having fun with the footrest. Time to look out the window. Pretty much my favorite activity on a train. The first southbound stop for the Coast Starlight is the Tacoma Dome Station. But the Tacoma Dome is nowhere in sight. Dale Chihuly has his Museum of Glass down here, and if you're ever in town, it's definitely worth checking out. But we're not staying. We're heading down the rails, going south. We've made it one hour. This trip should be a piece of cake. Ah, uh, now I want cake. So now we're going past Joint Base Lewis McCord, which is now the largest Army-led joint base in the United States, home of the Army's I Corps and the Air Force's 62nd Airlift Wing. Lots of reserve units, too. Thank you for your service, folks. Next stop is Olympia, the capital of Washington State. I'm going to get off and stretch my legs. If I can make it down these stairs. It says caution, watch your step, they ain't kidding. So let me introduce you to my good friend, Bob. He'll be joining us on a trip real soon. In fact, I'm handing him his ticket for a future Amtrak train trip. Bob's a veteran and a really good guy. But this is a short stop and got to get back on the train or Amtrak will leave without you. The next stop south, Centralia, Washington, a city that was founded in 1875 by George Washington, the son of a black slave and a jack of all trades who journeyed to the Pacific Northwest to create a new life. The Centralia stop isn't a smoke break stop, so the only people getting off the train are the people getting off the train. And in just a few short moments, we resume our journey south. 11.50 a.m., two hours into the trip, and it's lunchtime. <laughs> so let's explore the Amtrak Cafe, which is located in the lower level of the observation car. And it's down more stairs. 
Before the pandemic, you were allowed to actually eat your food down here. But as of the filming of this video, that option hasn't returned yet. Here's the Amtrak Cafe menu. The prices are pretty reasonable, I think. With the exception of the alcoholic drinks, they're a little pricey. But that probably won't stop me from enjoying an adult beverage at some point during this trip. Our cafe car food challenge number one begins. We start with the artisan turkey sandwich, which is smoked white turkey and cheddar on a rustic oat topped roll. We add Miss Vicky's original sea salt kettle cooked potato chips and a ginger ale to wash it down with. When I opened the sandwich, I was greeted by this sight. <laughs> wow, was the artisan not feeling artistic today? Or maybe just having a bad day? I don't know. Kind of a sloppy assembly job. Thankfully, once reassembled, and with a little mustard and mayo added, the sandwich was delicious. The bread was so soft, so fresh. Oh, got to admit it, it was great and beautiful Washington State scenery to enjoy while you're munching? Oh, I love Amtrak. Have you ever traveled on Amtrak before? Or are you planning on traveling on Amtrak soon? If so, let me know in the comments section below about your Amtrak experiences or Amtrak plans. I'd love to know. Vancouver, Washington. It looks like this is the place where cars go to die. And my phone and camera batteries are about to die too. And since on Amtrak, the electrical outlets are limited, bringing along something like this that gives you four USB outlets might be a smart move. We leave Vancouver, Washington and head across the Burlington Northern Railroad Bridge 9.6 with the Oregon State Line actually in the very center of this wide main channel of the Columbia River. We are now in the state of Oregon. Ahead of us is Hayden Island, which sits in the middle of the Columbia River. Parts of the island are within Portland city limits, and it is one of Portland's 95 neighborhoods. After traveling through Hayden Island, we traverse this smaller channel of the Columbia River over the Oregon Slough Railroad Bridge. Hey, that looks like the SS Minnow. Gilligan! <laughs> Sorry. We're now deep in the heart of Portland, Oregon, but we still have the Willamette River to cross to get to Portland's Union Station. We are currently traversing the Burlington Northern Railroad Bridge 5.1, and off in the distance is beautiful St. John's Bridge. That's North Doan Lake. <laughs> Don't ask. We actually arrive in Portland early, and since we aren't leaving Portland until 2.15 p.m., it gives us some time to explore this historic building that opened on February 14, 1896, with its magnificent 150-foot-tall Romanesque Revival Clock Tower. This building is so old, it still has a newsstand. Do you remember newspapers? One of the differences between riding coach and business class on Amtrak is business class passengers, along with sleeper car passengers, are allowed access to the Metropolitan Lounge. Inside, there are plenty of charging outlets, a TV to watch if you're bored, comfy, comfy seats to relax in, and complimentary beverages to enjoy. There's a nice selection of cold drinks and hot coffee. For my beverage, I chose some Gold Peak Real Brew Tea. The Metropolitan Lounge has some big picture windows, so you can keep an eye on the train to make sure it doesn't leave without you. Right outside the Metropolitan Lounge is the waiting area for coach passengers, with not quite so comfy seats, and a gift shop. In the lobby are two really cool old photographs of Union Station that look to be over 100 years old. You know, for a building well over a hundred years old, you got to admit the place looks well cared for. Here's a real CoStar Light tip. If you're in business class or coach, and the cafe car is your only food option for the entire trip, next to the gift shop here, there's a snack bar where you can get hot food, milkshakes, and ice cream, and bring them back onto the train with you. 
Well, it's almost 2.15 p.m. and time to get back on the train. And go up these stairs again. Have I mentioned I'm not a big fan of stairs? Ah, uh, home sweet seat? We depart Union Station at 2.22 p.m. Now we're heading east and crossing the Willamette River again. To the south, you can see the Burnside Bridge. Since the train is still empty, I can jump over to the other side of the train and we can see the Northwest Broadway Bridge. Now, the bridge we're currently traveling on is the historic Steel Bridge, completed in 1912. It's a double-decker bridge with the trains running on the bottom and automobiles up top on the Pacific Coast Highway. For some reason, we stop here on the Steel Bridge, which gives us a moment to gaze upon the waters of the mighty Willamette. After a few moments, we begin to move slowly. It sure is nice being able to jump to both sides of the train. Goodbye, Portland. It was nice to visit, but there is a sandwich waiting for us in Los Angeles. We gotta go. If you are enjoying this ride as much as I am, and you don't want to miss out on our next trip, be sure to hit those like and subscribe buttons. I really appreciate it, traveling partner. We passed the Willamette Falls Hydroelectric Power Reservoir. And you may not be able to see it on mobile, but there's a little rainbow over there, over the falls. We're now traveling down the eastern bank of the Willamette River. Oregon sure is pretty. The Willamette River makes a sharp turn and heads west as we continue south through and past Canby, Oregon. We arrive in Salem, Oregon State Capitol, at 3.41 p.m. At 4.15 p.m., we arrive in Albany, Oregon, and we quickly leave Albany, Oregon. Yeah, I'm still hopping from side to side, trying not to miss anything. <laughs> it's almost 5 p.m., and we pulled over to wait for another Amtrak train to pass by. Good thing we pulled over. And we start to roll down the tracks again. We arrive in Eugene, Oregon at 5.14 p.m., and it's a fresh air break time. Sure is nice to stretch the legs a bit. That's Alex, the business car attendant, and he was fantastic. Well, it's almost 6 p.m., and that means it's dinner time. And time for the Amtrak Cafe Food Challenge, part two. The cafe car attendant was also named Brian. Great name, and he was great too. I asked him what was the best item on the menu, and he recommended the Hebrew National All Beef Hot Dog. No mystery meat in this dog. To which I added Miss Vicky's Sea Salt Kettle Cooked Potato Chips and an Ice Cold Stone IPA. The verdict? Excellent. The Amtrak observation car is pretty empty right now, but can get crowded at times. As you can see from the sign, masks were required at all times on the train when this video was filmed. In fact, it, hey, did someone put googly eyes on the masked person sign? <laughs> oh, yes, they did. Well played, googly eye bandit. Well played. Now it's time for the Amtrak Cafe Food Challenge, part three. Next at bat is Sandy's Amazing Chocolate Chunk Non-GMO Cookie made with cage-free eggs and Minute Maid 100% orange juice. And the verdict is outstanding, fresh, yummy, and full of chocolate. Mm -hmm. And now it's time for the Amtrak Cafe Food Challenge, part four. It's the cheese and cracker tray, accompanied by a 2018 Line 39 Cabernet Sauvignon. They also had a Chardonnay and a Pinot Gris. Yes, I'm eating again. I'm thinking that stuffing myself with food, beer, and wine will make sleeping in a seat on the train easier? Hopefully this experiment doesn't backfire. The cheese included chunks of Tillamook medium cheddar, Vermont sharp cheddar cheese, and a baby bell called Edam. Darn right I'm going to Edam. I'm going to eat them all up. Sorry, I couldn't resist that one. Wow, we just hit the 10-hour mark on this train ride, and this train trip is really fun. Traveling by Amtrak isn't for everyone, but if you're a stop-and-smell-the-roses kind of person or a 
stop and eat the cheese and drink the wine kind of person, oh, you gotta love it. Well, night has fallen on this mostly empty Amtrak train, and it's time to transfer all of the data from my iPhone and cameras to the external hard drive. There are links in the description below of the gear I'm using and recommend, if you're interested. And as an Amazon affiliate, I earn from qualifying purchases. About 8.27 p.m., we pull into Chamolt, Oregon, which is located in a national forest in nearby Crater Lake. There's snow on the ground, and it looks cold out there. About 9.45 p.m., we roll into Klamath Falls. You know, the only bummer about taking the Coast Starlight southbound is when you go over the mountains in the dark, you miss some pretty spectacular scenery. Now, when you take the Coast Starlight north, it's usually light out and you can enjoy the mountains and the tunnels and the breathtaking views. We depart Klamath Falls at 10.08 p.m. It's officially quiet time on the train. The blue lights have come on. It's 4.48 a.m. I slept pretty darn good. So here's an Amtrak tip I just learned. I had assumed the best place to sleep would be in the middle of the train car, so you are as far away as possible from these noisy doors. These things are loud and would wake me up, but while they dim most of the lights during the quiet time, check out the middle of the train. These lights leading down the stairs never go off at all, so unless you have a good sleep mask, which I wasn't smart enough to bring on this trip, you don't want to sleep here, so... I think the best place to sleep is right where I unknowingly chose, right between the bright lights and the noisy doors. If you've taken an overnight Amtrak train in business or coach, please let me know in the comments if it was easy or difficult for you to sleep, especially if you had a stranger next to you. Please let me know. It's around 5.30 a.m. and we're rolling into Sacramento. Now, the Sacramento stop is a pretty long stop, just like the Portland, Oregon stop. So I guess they have to fill the train up with gas, check the oil, make sure the tire pressure and the tires is okay. You know, stuff like that. At this stop, I jumped off for some fresh air and, wow, that clock is so wrong. It's 5.48 a.m. Now, since the train won't be moving for a while, this is the perfect time to get cleaned up because hygiene is important. Sleeper car passengers have actual showers. Business and coach passengers do not. We get a rather small-sized bathroom, which makes this a great time for a very important Amtrak tip. Always lock the bathroom door, which apparently not all Amtrak passengers do. And I highly recommend these defense body wipes for the cleanup job. They're good for camping, too. There's a link in the description below to get some. And I'll spare you the horrifying spectacle of the cleanup job itself. You're welcome. And dawn breaks over Sacramento, California. And I have to be honest, it feels wonderful to be clean. And I'm sure my fellow passengers appreciate it, too. Nobody wants a stinky neighbor, right? Still, no neighbors for me, so... I might as well slide over and film from that side and catch this beautiful California sunrise. See you later, Sacto. You know, rolling down the rails on a train as the sun rises sure is a glorious way to start the day. But that sun rising also means it's breakfast time and time for the Amtrak Cafe Food Challenge number five. Well, I went with a Minute Maid OJ, a blueberry muffin, and the chef-crafted quality breakfast bagel. And it was fresh, and it was delicious. Way to go, Amtrak. You've stepped up your breakfast sandwich option nicely. So now that the sun is out, I can show you how the Amtrak seats turn into a bed if you're lucky enough to be traveling without someone sitting next to you. I curled up and slept nicely. The only thing was sometimes my feet would stick in the aisle, but... And what are you going to do? So here is a quick walkthrough of the train. Coach car number one, kind of the caboose. I always kick the bottom button and keep my hands off the upper button. You know, for hygiene. Important these days, right? 
Here's coach car number two. Here's the observation slash cafe car. Looks like some of my fellow travelers have woken up. And that looks like a conductor to me. Here we are crossing the Sun Bay, and in front of us is the Benicia Martinez Bridge, and our arrival into Martinez, California. Folk entomology in Martinez claims the invention of the martini cocktail, and that it is named for the city of Martinez. And that's the rest of the story. Check out this vintage Southern Pacific train. A little bit of railroad history right there. The Martinez Amtrak Station. And we complete hour 22 of this trip. Wow. And thank you so much for riding along. And well, the best is yet to come. And if you want to donate to this channel for our next adventure, you can make a donation via PayPal. There's a link in the description below. Thank you so much, traveling friend. I appreciate you. So we leave Martinez, and for a while, the train is going to hug the southern coast of the Corquines Strait, which is part of a tidal estuary of the Sacramento and San Joaquin rivers as they drain into the San Francisco Bay. Off in the distance, you can see the Benicia Martinez Bridge again and the old railroad bridge we crossed as well. And the SS Minnow again, I think. Wow, it sure is a beautiful morning, isn't it? Looks like we've got someone racing us. Sorry, Charlie, we got you beat. Lots of ripples out there. And there goes Emeryville. At 7.50 a.m., we roll into Jack London Square, which isn't the most scenic of Amtrak stops, to be honest. But I did make a new friend, which is one of the best parts of riding Amtrak. Anna's son, Alex, is a train enthusiast. Hi, Alex. That right there is Oakland Alameda Coliseum, home of the Oakland A's. I've had a lot of fun in that stadium, rolling through Fremont, California. At 9.40 a.m., we roll past Levi Stadium, home of the San Francisco 49ers. And we've been on this train 24 hours, an entire day. Thanks for sticking with me. And here we are in San Jose. But it's a short stop and we're rolling again. There's the Cal train. Ah, wine country and farmland. It looks like they are growing cactus. I didn't know that was a thing. Any cactus growers out there? Please comment in the description if you've grown cactus. It's high noon, which means it's time for the Amtrak Cafe Food Challenge Part 6. The Angus Cheeseburger, Miss Vicky's Chips, and a Coke. Well, the burger was okay. I have to say the Hebrew Nat Dog is uh, far superior. Hello, Salinas. And goodbye, Salinas. One windmill is spinning. The other is taking a nap, maybe? Whoa, kind of makes you dizzy, doesn't it? Lots of oil drilling going on out here. They almost look like big ants. Well, we'd like to stop and visit Paso Robles, but we've got a sandwich waiting for us in Los Angeles. Maybe next time. Well, the sun is out. It's not too cloudy. You know, if the train doesn't get delayed, we might just get that California beach sunset. Oh, fingers crossed. Hey, there's a couple hikers up there. Nice day for a hike. So I jumped over to the left side of the train again to enjoy this valley. And it looks like a, a pyramid off in the distance to the right. And back to the right side of the train. Hey, there's that pyramid again. And that is the California men's colony. You know, let's not ever end up there, all right? Be good. And we arrive in San Luis Obispo. Time for a fresh air break. It's nice, but pretty windy here in Slowtown today. San Luis Obispo is a pretty short stop this time, and we're railroading again. 
30 hours on this train and we're in the home stretch. Finally, the Pacific Ocean. And now we begin what I think is the most beautiful portion of the southbound Amtrak Coast Starlight journey. After soaking in these spectacular views, I decided to see what the sunset looks like in the lounge car. But I headed back to my seat, because I think the view is better there. And yeah, there it is. That magical coast starlight sunset. Wow, check out these birds. This must be the place to hang out around here, if you're a bird. Wow, that sun is bright. And wow, that window is dirty, but you know, that's to be expected after about a thousand miles down the railroad. 32 hours into our journey. And wow, did we ever get a sunset. And I'm so glad you were here to enjoy it with me. The first stop after leaving the coast is Santa Barbara. And it's nice to get a final stretch. And... It's time for our final Amtrak Cafe food guard challenge, number seven. This time it's the blue corn vegan tamale, chips, and a soda. It may not look that appealing, but it was a pretty good snack. Very tasty. 6.50 p.m. we hit Oxnard and quickly depart. So on this trip I listened to an audiobook, The Murder on the Orient Express by Agatha Christie. You should give it a try. A lot of fun. There's a link in the description below to join Audible and purchase that audiobook. I wonder what that is. I hope it's a chocolate factory. There's Bob Hope Airport, which is now Hollywood Burbank Airport. Sorry, Bob. They've forgotten you. Thanks for the memories, anyway. Off in the distance is the City of the Angels and L.A. City Hall, which my dad said used to be the tallest building in the city when he was a kid. So, with us in Los Angeles, that means it's sandwich time, and that can only mean... Philippe, the original, opened in 1908. In 1918, they created the French dip sandwich by accident, and the rest is history. Since 1951, they've been here, just a couple blocks from LA Union Station. Their French dip is well worth a 35-hour Amtrak ride to me. And I arrived 30 minutes before closing, just in time, and got my sandwich. But I was so hungry, I forgot to hit the record button. And this is the only image I have of sandwich perfection. But if you are near LA's Union Station, you gotta go here. And if you want to continue traveling with Brian on our next adventure, just click on this link right here. Click it. Click it. You know you want to click something, so click it. Thanks for watching!